I told you they'd show up. Good to see you. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it's the first weekend of February. Today is the third. Now, what I like to do on this show is just share my due diligence on hot OTC and penny stocks. I'm a day trader. I primarily trade stocks under five bucks, and it doesn't matter what market they're on. I'm always keeping my eye open for stocks that have potential to make us money. Now, most of the stocks we look at, I find when I'm looking at the charts, I find it quick and easy to see heat in a chart. So when I find a chart that has heat, whether that be volume coming in or a breakout setup, then I'll go rummaging around through all the information, the press releases, the filings, looking for a hot piece of information. When I find a hot piece of news to go with my hot chart, I've got myself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you on a regular basis. Well, today I've got a very interesting stock to share with you. This is a mining company. Now, I know we've looked at mining companies here recently, but you know, over the last few months, we've only been looking at lithium mining companies, which I completely understand. There is a huge market for lithium right now and short supply of it, and the whole world wants it. So yeah, lithium mines are good to consider, but there's other mining companies out there as well. And I've got one to share with you right now. This one is into gold mining. This is ticker G-R-O-Y, Gold Royalty Corporation. She finished the day on Friday at $1.36, and she was down just about 1%. Now, yes, lithium is the green gold right now, but yellow gold is always in demand. Since 2000, gold has gone up 10 times in value from $200 up to $2,000. It's always going to retain value. People are going to hold gold for that security. People also like gold for the vanity, right? We like it in our jewelry. And there's a lot of practical aspects for gold that most just aren't aware of. Do you know that virtually every motherboard, those green boards that have all the electronics soldered onto it, there is some gold and some silver on every single motherboard out there. We need it for our electronics. And you can make money on that, folks. You can get yourself, oh, I don't know, 20, 30 motherboards. Just pull them out of old computers, old smart TVs, and throw all those motherboards in a box. You don't even have to bubble wrap them. You're going to close that box up, and you're going to put it up on eBay for 99 cents, and you're going to get a couple hundred bucks for it. They'll smelt it down and get the gold and silver. My point is, gold is never going to go out of fashion. There is always a good reason to have gold. So they tell us here that Gold Royalty Corps is a precious metals focused royalty and streaming company offering creative financing solutions to the metals and mining industry. Our mission is to acquire royalties, streams, and similar interests at varying stages of the mine life cycle to build a balanced portfolio offering near, medium, and long-term attractive returns for our investors. Fact of the matter is, folks, this company does not do any mining. They don't own any properties. They are a mining holdings company. They help other mining companies to succeed. They invest money in them and help them do all that they need to do. And that is all they do. And for that, they get a royalty. They get paid money just for helping the company financially. That makes sense, right? And there's two types of royalties. You have one where they get paid whether the mining company is making any money or not, whether they're producing. They get paid month to month or quarter to quarter, whatever it is. Then they have a second royalty for the companies that are producing. They get paid based on how much money, how much revenues that company is creating. So they've got many streams coming in. They're well diversified. How many streams? About 250 of them right now, and they are around the world. Right now, as I said, they've got exposure to about 250 projects through three, maybe four or five companies now. It's tough to tell. I've been looking at a presentation that just came out here recently, but they just had current news come out. Looks like they've made more acquisitions, so I'm not quite sure how many companies they own right now. However, their projects are all over the world. They've got many of them in Canada, a bunch of them in the United States. Some are in Mexico, Brazil, Colombia, Peru, Africa. I think I saw one in Turkey. 
I don't know where they're all at, but they have got gold reserves all over the place. Now, the companies they're working with right now are some of the biggest gold mining companies in the world. They list three of them here, Nevada Gold Mines, Agnico Ego, and I Am Gold. And these are just a few of the projects that these companies have. Some of them have about a dozen, some have about a hundred. There's a lot of them here. But what I wanted to point out to you here was that two of these companies are actually on the major exchange. Agnico Ego Mines, ticker AEM, currently at $48.62. Look at her revenues. At the end of 2022, she did $5.7 billion worth of gold mining. $2.8 billion of that was profit. The other one, IM Gold Corp., she is a penny stock still at $2.47, but look at her revenues. She's doing virtually a billion dollars every single year. These companies are making money regularly, and these are just a couple of the companies they're working with. Now, what I really want to share with you here, I am on their website here. I just had to zoom in on that one area. They've got a lot of information on this page, lots of it. You can jump into their corporate presentation right here. There is lots of information in here. This is easy to read. This just came out, and this is where I'm getting some of my pages. You'll recognize some of these here. And they've got lots of general information in here, like this one here. This is a great pipeline picture. They show us these are the ones that are actually producing money right now. Out of the 250, they've got about six of them that are paying them based on revenues. But all of them are paying. Whether they're making money or not, all of them are paying. All of these companies are close to getting ready to generating revenues. These plus four more. In advanced exploration, all of these projects plus an additional 28. And then these are in exploration plus 172 more. Now, directly and indirectly, the company is working with all of these companies. So they have got a lot of companies they are working with. But back to this presentation, if you're really interested in these projects, because there are a lot of them, there's just no way we could go through 250 projects. They do start breaking down some of them. Underneath the management here, you can get information about various projects, how much the deals are for, what sort of royalties they're going to get, what sort of production there is or what they're expecting. There's a lot of information here. There's also another one. If we go back, the presentation is here. Over here, they have what's called an asset handbook. Lots of information there as well. But the best piece of information I found was this little arrow right here. Portfolio. Our diversified portfolio consists of over 200 royalties located in mining friendly jurisdictions throughout the Americas, North America, Central America, South America, and a lot of other places. But that arrow right here gave me a ton of information. They actually give us a list down here of every single project they are involved in. And I mean, there's lots of them here, folks. You can see me zipping, and I didn't hit the bottom yet. And there's a lot of great information here. You've got the name of the project, what company is in control of it, where it's located at, the deal they have made, what sort of money are they getting paid, NSR is the money they get paid even if the company is not generating any revenues, and PI is what they get when they are generating revenues. And every single one of these, they are getting paid on. Up here, it tells you which ones are making money and what stage of development they're at, what metal they're pulling up. Now, we are talking gold, but whenever you go for gold, you're going to find other metals. That's just the way it works. You're going to find silver. You're going to find copper, and they're not going to throw that away. That's not in the, the garbage pile. They're going to make money on that as well, but they are primarily after the gold. So, again, as you can see, there are lots and lots of projects here, and a lot of these projects, if you hover over them, they have an arrow, it'll open up and give you information about that project. This is a lot of due diligence, folks. So the company has lots going on around the world. 
They are pulling in revenues. The company came on the market back in 2021. Back then, they had 14 projects. 14 projects. And now they've got 250. And that's not counting the most recent news that we're going to take a look at. So don't hesitate to do your due diligence here, folks. This is a holdings company that's going to make money regardless of what's going on. They don't have to pay for any expenses. They don't have any problems that they're going to have to deal with with the companies. All those projects are being handled by the three to six companies that own them. This company only supports those companies with money. They give them money in the front door to keep their exploration or production moving forward so that they can keep their revenues coming in. And the great thing about this is when you got 250 streams coming into your ocean, if one region goes into a drought, that's not going to hurt your ocean. You've got lots of other streams bringing in money. But again, their projects, all of them, are paying back to the company, whether they're producing right now or not. And they just keep adding more and more streams. So as we've got a dozen at the most right now actually developing and producing, we've got lots of them coming up behind that are going to be coming on the scenes, opening up more and more revenue streams for the company, exponentially growing their revenues. Personally, folks, I think this has a strong future. I think it is going to grow and grow and grow. All right, let's go take a look at the stock now and get some information about what it's been doing. We've jumped on over here to the otcmarkets.com website to do research on this major exchange stock. Sure we have. You know, folks, I do all of my research here initially. It doesn't matter if it's major exchange or OTC. And I usually find everything I'm looking for. And in those few times that I don't, well, there's a whole internet out there to fill those gaps. So we're looking at gold royalty, ticker G-R-O-Y, and we're checking out her relative volume. Over the last 30 days, she's been doing roughly 392,000 shares a day. On Friday, she was a little light. She fell down to 241,000 shares. Share structure for Groy, not a bad share count. We're roughly 145 million shares. And when I was going through the information, I saw they had roughly 11 million warrants. Those will be converted into shares three, four, five years down the road. So fully diluted, we're looking at roughly 155 million shares, which isn't bad. The float, I have no idea what that is. But we know it's not going to be higher than the outstanding share count and could be considerably less. Market cap for the company, we are at about 195 million. Financials for the company. Well, these are a little outdated. They only go up to 2022 on the annual, same on the quarterly. So I did find the most recent financial and I have jumped into this. And let me make these numbers bigger for you so you can see it the way I do. Now, the first thing we got to take notice of is we've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on these charts or they're just not going to make any sense. So we are going to look at the third quarter of 2023. It is the most recent financial we got here. First, taking a look at the assets. They had $683 million in assets at the end of September 2023 and only $156 million in liabilities, which leaves us strong stockholder equity of over a half a billion dollars in this penny stock, $527 million. Folks, that is our money, the investors. That's divvied up amongst us through the stock. Speaking of the stock, it is undervalued right now, folks, and the company is completely aware of this. They did an audit, and the stock price is at 0.45 what it really should be. So it is less than half its true value right now. Looking at the revenues for the same period of time, end of September 2023, she did $797,000. Compared to the same period last year when she did $866,000. We've got a little bit of difference there, about $50,000, but I'm really not concerned about that. You're going to have fluctuation. What I am paying attention to is how many streams are opening up over time. These are huge mining corporations really working hard to make money, as you could see. And we only looked at two of them, and they were doing billions of dollars. So as this company grows, 
their revenues are going to grow and grow because they have so many projects out there amongst so many other companies that know how to do this work. Taking a look at the disclosures, since that's where we're at, we have got a good one here that came out on the 24th, an SC13G. This is new ownership. This is when you have an investor come in, buy so many shares, they qualify as a new owner. And this particular buy is actually covered in the news. So we're going to take a look at the news going back to December and coming forward. And I am not going to jump into all of these folks. Matter of fact, I'm probably not going to jump into any of them because there's a lot of news here. They've got a lot going on, but I can highlight what is happening. And what I want you to particularly pay attention to, it's not a one-way street here. The company is investing lots of money out. They'll get a contract for a deal paying $21 million for royalties on a mine for the life of the mine. So up front, they'll give the company $21 million and over time, they get payments and payments based on the revenues and the production of that company. Well, they've got companies they invest into and then you've got investors like us, but the whales, the guys that really want to invest, also investing in this company. So there are millions coming in and millions going out. There's a lot of cash flow in this company. So the first piece of news I found very interesting, first piece that we're going to look at from December 4th, the company advances the RIA uranium project, one of the largest land packages in western Athabasca Basin in Canada. I thought they were just in gold, silver, copper. No, now they're into uranium too. Talk about diversification. Now, this is a very unique deal because most of the deals I see, they get 2%, 3%, 5%, low percentages like that. This one, the company got 75% of the company. It's a big deal to them. Another piece of news in December, Gold Royalty announces $31 million royalty and gold link loan investments in Aurora's Bora Borima project financed by 40 million strategic convertible debiture. Also in December, Gold Royalty invests 31 million in Brazil Gold Project. Queens Road Capital announces $30 million investment into Gold Royalty. You got gold putting out 30 million, another company putting 30 million into the company. Wow, lots of money floating around this company. Coming to the end of December, the company completed an investment in Aurora's Bora Barima project. There's a lot of information here, folks, not only here, but over on the presentation and that asset book I was telling you about. Gold Royalty completes acquisition of Quebec Royalties portfolio. More due diligence, folks. There is so much going on with this company, and the bottom line is they're going to be making more and more money. Here in January... Gold Mining completes sale of Nutmeg Mountain to Nevada Gold and receives $3 million in Nevada Gold shares. So they sold a property, but rather than just take the money, they took a percentage of that company as well. And then the most recent piece of news, which I thought we'd see more of, they are uh, getting positive results in their drillings, the highest drill intercept to date. I don't know which project this is. Whistler Gold Copper Project in Alaska. Another great project. The company's got so many irons in the fire, folks. I can't tell you which ones are hot and which ones are cold. But they've got a lot going on. So much that I can't see the company failing. There's just too much happening here and it's all starting to generate now. And you can see that by looking at the companies that they've invested in. They're making really strong revenues. So the company looks good to me for the long haul. She could do a pop though. The chart is set up for a breakout right now and she may be drawing attention that I'm not aware of. She caught my attention and that's why I'm sharing it with you. Let's go take a look at the chart. So let's chart this bad boy on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. We're looking at gold royalty, ticker G-R-O-Y, I do have it opened up to a six-month, four-hour chart, but I would prefer to open up a three-year, one-week chart to show you how it all began. It appears it was back in March of 2021 when they came on the market, roughly $5. And it was back then she hit her high of $7.08. And from there, she has been in a serious downtrend, hitting a low of $1.18 October of 2023. 
off of that low, she did push up to her 20 and she's been trying to get over that 20 for a while. And it doesn't look like she's having a whole lot of success. Not a lot of inspiration on the three year chart. I'll grant you that. But our oscillators tell us something different. They tell us it is the darkest before the dawn and we can see that light on the horizon right now. Looking here at my PPO, you see the hourglass design between the blue line and the red line. This is my PPO percentage price oscillator, a lot like your MACD, except it uses a percentage of the price instead of the whole price. And this is my ADX, which we like to think of as trend continuation. Whenever the trend changes direction, the line changes direction. Well, you see the hourglass we got here, blue line coming down, red line coming up. Whenever you see the two coming together, you will see the price falling on the charts, guaranteed. Whenever the blue line is going up, and the red line is coming down and they're going apart from each other, guaranteed your price is rising. Well, right now they are flat. Now, I'm not even thinking about this PPO being underneath the pink line. I'm just looking for change. Right now she's flat. My ADX is flat. My MACD is flat. My RSI has a hint of rise right now. She is cool. She's down there at 40. I don't like her anything less than 55, but she's curving up right now. That is that shimmer on the dark horizon right now. So I see change coming. Let's come on down to that six month, four hour view. Serious downtrend, right? Six months ago, we were at $2.13, hitting that low in October of $1.18. Now you can see she has been paying very strong heed to the 200 haul. She's laying on it here, bouncing on it here, bouncing off it here. This is just like your 200 day SMA, except it puts more credence on current prices and penny stocks pay strong heed to it. So if you don't have the 200 haul, H-U-L-L on your charts, you may want to start using it. So she was laying on her 200 haul here came underneath and then jumped through all of her SMAs, getting close to the 200, but why waste an attempt on a breakout? That's too steep. Think of that hill as having ice on it. Anytime you get up on it and it's steep, you're just gonna slip and fall off that hill. So she got close, came back down to her 200 hall, regrouped and got some strength and pushed off of that strong through the 200, showing us enthusiasm, incentive. She wants to start climbing. It's just too steep. So she came back down underneath the 200 hole really deep, creating a W here, W for winner. Whenever you see a W on the board, normally at the end of it, it takes off. If you see an M on the board, normally at the end of it, it falls, M for murder. Well, this took off from about a buck 26 through the 200, real strong push up to $1.62. Then she lost it, went through all of her SMAs, including the 200 haul, down to the 200 SMA. Fully respecting it, right? Bounces back up, and where does she hit her head? To 200 haul. Fully respecting it. She pays heed to both of these lines, folks. When she hit her head here, she hit it hard. She came right down through that 200 day SMA. She was scratching to stay up there and I do see a W here. I do see it, but she did not take off. She was underneath the 200 and couldn't get a grip and she fell. Now, right now she shows signs of starting to turn. All of these steep falls have started leveling out. Our 50 is about ready to go flat. Our 20 is going flat. Our 200 has some work to do. Osculators say she is in recovery. Look at that PPO. It is crossing the pink line right now and we do have a spread on our ADX and our PPO. We've already had our crossover on our MACD but it's crossing the signal line right now with big green bars coming into the picture. And our RSI has been climbing over the last three days from 41 up to 54. Looking a little better. But my favorite chart is the one hour chart. This is an atypical breakout chart. You got your price deep underneath the 200 day SMA. And as the 200 gets closer, you start seeing the price showing signs that it wants to get, it wants to climb, it wants to break out. Now she has only been bouncing about 15 cents here. 
from a buck 32 to a buck 45 but notice how it's all getting tighter and tighter and tighter underneath that 200 and right now she's being squeezed and getting ready to pop look at every sma here folks our 200 day haul has gone blue I split mine. It's purple when it's falling. It's blue when it's climbing. I can definitely tell she's on an uphill climb. So is our 50. She's bouncing off of the 20. And there is our nine day just getting ready to cross the 200. All of these are going to be crossing the 200 probably on Monday. And that's going to give us some extra strength here, folks. She's going to start to push. Looking at our oscillators, our PPO has been climbing for two days. Our MACD is pushing up hard, green bar is accumulating, and our RSI, though it doesn't show it on this chart, is pulling down a little bit right now, still at 57. I am liking this chart. You can see the volume is a bit light here, but it is here. We would like to see more volume come in. Take a look at our five day, five minute. Look at that. Low bubble and high bubble, both pre-market in the same day. And it's uh, 10 cents. And I am going to grab my Fibonacci here because whenever I see a big jump or a big fall, I want some information from that. So I leach it by tagging both sides of the fall or the jump. Now, these are algorithmic supports and resistances. You normally see me get these by connecting them to historical price points. We're not doing that. These are algorithmically placed and you can trade off of them and the price will respect them. Now, I don't know if I'm exactly on mark. Looks like I may be a wee bit off here, but what I am looking for primarily first off is the 50% mark, the halfway point right in the middle. The top half is all positive. The bottom half is negative. She goes up. I expect it to come down about 50%, but no more than 50%. If she comes down to the 50 and stays above it, there's a stronger likelihood that she's going to continue to climb. If she falls underneath the 50, there's a stronger likelihood she's going to fall. She came down under the 50. She did give it a good heave ho to get towards it. You can see she jumped towards it, could not hold, fell all the way down. Then we've got a serious crouch here like a cat does before it pounces high, jumped very high. We got way up here and then she's falling back down. She is wrestling to get over the halfway mark, which she did today. Today she got over it. Once she got over it, she had this pillar come down. Why do I call it a pillar? Because it is actually holding up the bridge that is being built right now. This was not a fall of danger. This came down through the nine, the 20, the 200 hall and sitting on top of the 50. This to me is a pillar. I would have read that as a buying opportunity because I'm positive. I see this often enough. One bar comes down, comes back up. You got to move quick, folks. This is a five minute chart. So this was only here five minutes. And off of this, she bounced right back up onto her nine day SMA. After market, she is still pushing up and climbing. She has had a pullback here, but it looks like she is right here in the middle of this bar, which is a good place for her to be. What do our oscillators say? Well, she has been climbing on the back half of the day, pushing up on our PPO. Same story with our MACD. <laughs> RSI is still at 57. So everything is looking like it's actually ready to do a breakout, folks. Which is kind of strange because most mining companies don't have breakouts. They're slow cooking meals. They take a while to get hot. This one looks like it's ready to pop. But I really like this stock for the long hold. I am watching her for the pop, but I like her because she doesn't have any liabilities in any of these mining companies. 250 projects amongst five companies that are doing billions of dollars worth of business, and they have no liability in it at all. If anything goes wrong with any of those projects, they've got all the other projects still bringing them in revenues. And they get paid whether these mines are making production or not. That's a good, safe business, folks. So I like Groy. I've shared some information with you just to show you what I like about her. But come on now, there's a lot of due diligence to do here. And I think it is worth an investment, not just a play. So if you're going to invest in the company, do your due diligence, whatever amount of time it takes. And the one thing I did not talk about that you definitely have to do due diligence on, the management. Always check the management if you're going to leave your money in that company for a while. 
right? That's who you're trusting. They can make or break the company. I like the management from what I read. We just didn't have as much time to cover it all as I'd like to. So please, folks, do your own due diligence. You know what I always say. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya. Ba-da-ba-da-ba-ba-da-ba-da-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-